Hi, my name is Pumika and in this lesson we are going to be dealing with the cilia and flagella. So we have already done the major organelles and now it's time for some, uh, some organelles which are really important for the movement of the cell and this is the cilia and the flagella. So um, swimming is the major uh, movement of uh, exhibited by sperm and by many other protozoans. Some cells are propelled at velocities approaching 1 millimeter per second by the beating of cilia and flagella flexible membrane extensions of the cell so cilia and flagella they range in uh, length from a few microns to more than 2 millimeter in the case of some insects from flagella although cilia and flagella are the same they were given different names because their structures were studied typically cell possesses one or two long flagella whereas ciliated cells have many short cilia so because uh, the names were different because if 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 we consider one cell and it has lots and lots of cilia then it's a ciliated cell but if a flagella is to be present then it is only one and two and it is a long structure okay for example, the mammalian spermatozoan has a single flagellum and the unicellular green alga, Chlamydomonas, has two flagella. And the unicellular protozoan, Paramecium, is covered with few thousands of cilia, which are used both in movement and bringing in food particles. In mammals, many epithelial cells are ciliated in order to sweep materials across the tissue surface. For instance, huge numbers of cilia cover the surface of mammalian respiratory passage, where they dislodge and expel particulate matter that collects in the mucus secretions of these tissues so if you have done the respiratory system in my course of physiology then you may know this these are some general details so um, this was some general factual data about the cilia and flagella let's see uh, diagrammatically so as you can see this whole cell is covered with these green fiber like structures this is the cilia whereas this cell has only these four uh, long structures these are the flagella so these are less in number that therefore they're called flagella and these are so many in number therefore they are the uh, cilia so now let's uh, talk about the structure of the cilia and flagella now i want you to pay very close attention at all of this and remember the structure so that we can talk about them in deeper detail all right so uh, we have two uh, central microtubular structures right here okay this is the axoneme then we have some radial spokes which connects the axoneme to the outer microtubular doublet right here so outer microtubular doublet then we have some dynein arms that protrude from the doublets and this is the plasma membrane okay so uh, Virtually all eukaryotic cilia and flagella are remarkably similar in their organization, possessing a central bundle of microtubules called the axoneme. So, axoneme is the central one in which nine outer uh, doublet microtubules surround a central pair of singlet microtubules. This characteristic 9 plus 2 arrangement is seen when an axoneme is viewed in cross section with the electron microscope. Each doublet microtubule consists of A and B tubules or subfibers. The A tubule is a complete microtubule with 13 protofilaments while the B contains 10 protofilaments. So that is why you can notice that the A microtubule is bigger because it has got 10 or uh, 13 um, protofilaments whereas the B tubule is somewhat smaller as comparison to the A1 so that is the reason why it has got 10 protofilaments okay so uh, the central one is the axoneme and the outer ones they are uh, the doublets and they are connected by radial spokes so if you remember we just did centriole in the previous lesson and in the centriole it was a 9 plus 3 arrangement because all of them they were present in uh, triplets right and there was only one microtubule going right through the center okay okay moving on the bundle of microtubules comprising the axoneme is surrounded by the plasma membrane regardless of the organism or cell type the axoneme is about 0.25 micrometer in diameter but it varies greatly in length uh, from a few microns to more than 2 millimeter at its point of attachment to the cell the axoneme connects to the basal body okay like centrioles basal bodies are cylindrical structures about 0.4 micrometer long and 0.2 micrometer wide which contain 9 triplet microtubules okay so the point of attachment to the cell the axoneme is connected to the basal body from where the uh, the cilia and the flagella arises each triplet contains one complete 13 protofilament microtubule 
A tubule is fused to the incomplete B tubule. Okay, we did a bigger one and a smaller one attached to it. So the bigger one is the A tubule and it's complete, and the smaller one is the B, which is incomplete. Uh, which is uh, in turn fused to the incomplete C tubule. The A and B tubules of the basal body continue to the axonemal shaft, whereas the C tubule terminates within the transition zone where the basal body and the shaft. Okay, so the two central tubules in flagellum or a cilium also end in the transition zone above the basal body. As we will see later, the basal body plays an important role in initiating the growth of the axoneme. So it is the basal body from where the axoneme arises and therefore we can say it's the basal body from which the, uh, the main structure, the cilia and the flagella arises. Okay, so uh, within the axoneme, the two central singlet and nine outer doublet microtubules are continuous for the entire length of the structure. Okay, for the entire length, this is uh, similar. Doublet microtubules, which represent a specialized uh, polymer of tubulin. Okay, this is the tubulin protein, are found in the axoneme, permanently attached to the A tubule, or each doublet microtubule is an inner and outer row of dynein arms. All right. So, uh, in this uh, diagram right here, you can see the dynein arms right here projecting outside. Okay, these dyneins reach out to the B tubule of the neighboring doublet and the junction between A and B of one doublet is probably strengthened by a protein which is termed as tectin which is a highly alpha helical protein that is similar in structure to intermediate filament proteins. Each tectin filament uh, which is 2 nanometer in diameter and approximately 48 runs longitudinally along the wall of the outer doublet where the A tubule is joined to the B tubule. So everywhere you can see we have the B1 attached to the, the A1 of the next. So these are all kind of um, attached to each other by the dynein arms right here. Okay. Uh, moving on, the axoneme is held together by three sets of protein crosslinks. The central pair uh, of singlet microtubule are connected by periodic bridges like rungs on a ladder and are surrounded by fibrous structure named the inner sheet. Okay, a, sec a second set of linkers composed of the protein nexin joins the adjacent outer doublet microtubule spaced every 86 nanometer along the axoneme. Nexin is proposed to be a part of a dynein regulatory complex. So uh, the dynein regulatory complex is composed of this protein which is termed as uh, nexin and this nexin it kind of joins the adjacent outer doublet microtubules all right so uh, radial spokes which radiate from the uh, central singlet to a tubule of the outer doublets form the third linkage system okay so the first linkage system was between the doublets then the second one was the nexin uh, the dynein arms the nexin and finally the radial spokes so this is the three linkage system although the 9 plus 2 pattern is fundamental pattern of virtually all cilia and flagella the axonemes of certain protozoans and certain uh, insect sperm show interesting variations the simplest such axoneme containing three doublet microtubules and no central singlets so 3 plus 0 is found in daplius which is a parasitic uh, protozoan so obviously uh, it ranges from uh, species to species although it is uniform in a number of species but there are again certain certain exceptions just like this protozoan its flagellum beats slowly in a helical pattern other exonemes consist of 6 plus 0 arrangement is also possible 9 plus 0 arrangement is also possible so these atypical cilia and flagella which are all motile show that the central pair of singlet microtubules is not necessary for axonemal beating and that fewer than nine outer doublets can sustain motility but at a lower frequency okay so if the outer doublets are lesser than nine that obviously they're going to be slower but if the microtubule the central one is not present then it makes no difference at all now let's talk about the functions of the cilia and flagella they help in locomotion of ciliated and flagellated organisms Example, paramecium, chlamydomonas and structures such as zoospores, spermatozoa and other gametes. Okay, so the movement is uh, contributed by the cilia and flagella. Then in land animals, the cilia of the respiratory tract help in eliminating dust particles of the incoming air. We already did that. We have done this in the respiratory system as well. So you might as well check that chapter out in human physiology. I have already done it. 
Internal transport of several organs is performed by cilia. Example: passage of eggs in oviduct, passage of eggs in ov uh, this thing, passage of excretory substances in the kidneys. Cilia and flagella are able to perceive a number of sensations. Uh, tips of cilia and flagella secrete agglutinins to help in conjugation of gametes. Okay, so this is also contributed by the cilia and flagella. Cilia of some protists fuse to form an undulating membrane. Okay. They help in capturing food in some protists and animals, obviously. So, uh, flagella of gastrodermal cells circulate food in the gastrovascular cavity. Flagella of coanocytes or collar cells create water current in the canal system of the sponges. If you have done uh, zoology of that sense, then you may also know that the cilia also helps in all of that. Uh, then, uh, the cilia creates a current for movement of food and ingestion. Cilia and flagella create a current in water for quick dispersal of CO2 and replenishment of oxygen. In land animals, cilia or nasal cavity, trachea and bronchioles move the mucus trap dust uh, towards pharynx for elimination of course nephric filtrate moves into the urinary tubules with the help of cilia ovum released from ovary passes into the infundibulum and fallopian tube due to the cilia reaction we have done this in my previous course reproduction newly formed sperm passes to vasa efferentia in a similar fashion and then finally certain organisms have ciliated larvae the latter bring about dispersal of uh, species okay so because the larvae they are ciliated they may be carried to more uh, farther distances and that is how uh, the species they multiply so that was about cilia and flagella i hope i made myself clear you can write down all these functions while doing this tutorial and it's all going to help you be very clear because in ncrt all these topics they are very short and you know they're quickly gone through and in the refreshers you usually don't know how to kind of make notes and you know um, categorize what to study and what to not so uh, I hope I made myself clear. You can still ask me questions in the query section. I'll be happy to help you all. Please follow me and recommend this onto your page. And please uh, rate and review my course as well. Thank you for watching.